Hello, we are back. I am so excited. We are back in control of Afghanistan. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Stephanie, you have to cover your face. I do not like seeing this. <laughs> I cover my head with a baseball cap when you're on. This is very... Yeah, just look, for you. Uh, that the band is back together, apparently. Yeah. Oh, my God, Donald Dean. Trump. We have to thank Donald Trump for that. because I mean, he's creating foreign and domestic terrorism. <laughs> is that not well, the story? We, He's actually the sponsor. It's called Trump's Taliban. They did a licensing deal with Donald Trump. <laughs> so if you're in the Taliban, you get one night free at a Trump hotel. It really works out well. <laughs> oh, my God. Dean, I have to ask. You, because, okay. Remember, like, he initially Monday said, oh, there's got to be a place for these people, these Afghans. We need to say, you know, like, oh, what a bad job Biden's doing. We need to say. And then I swear to God, I don't know if he saw the picture of, you know, the, uh, of uh, Afghanis on the, the plane. And then he's like, no, 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 those should be Americans. They should come to. I'm like, did he just now figure out they're brown? Because he needed to see the picture. So yeah. I seriously think he's that well, dumb that he's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can see the picture now and they're brown. <laughs> it's look, look, I mean, everyone is losing sight. Not us, but you see the mainstream media. Like you just played the clip where Stephanopoulos and they cut out the word no on Twitter. But even today, they're asking questions like, why did Biden fail us? Why aren't more questions about why did Trump let Abdul Baradar, the leader, the co-founder of the Taliban, out of prison in 2018, or Obama had him put in prison by pressuring mm -hmm. Pakistan to put the guy in prison. He's a co-founder of the Taliban. He was involved in killing U.S. troops. Mm -hmm. That's why he was in jail. Trump yeah. let him out to make a sweet peace deal, then pressured the Afghan military, let out 5,000 terrorists, which they did over their own objections because Trump pressured them to do that, and, and then withdrew our troops. This is what you get. Now, are the images good? No. Could have Biden done a little better? Yeah. But all of this is a Trump deal, mm -hmm. just like his other deals that didn't work out. This yeah. is the Trump stakes of peace deals. It's horrible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes. Yes. I. But, you know, and you said it right away yesterday on Twitter. It's confirmed. Floyd Ray Roseberry's uh, wife told local media her husband re uh, registered to vote for the first time in 2016 to vote for Trump. He's been very upset since Trump's lost. This is the Trump insurgency. Uh, the hashtag Donald Bin Laden. I, and thank you. You said you're either with the United States or with terrorist Trump. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Malcolm Nance, who you, is your buddy, our buddy, yeah. has talked about the Trump insurgency for a while. Thank you. And it's not like, we're like, wow, we didn't see this coming. No, it's here. It's like all of us are looking at the iceberg coming at the ship and the captain's like, hey, don't worry about it. Well, you know, no, we got to worry about it. They're building. And it's also, I have to call it the double standard with the media. Yes. The story today is almost gone. If he was Muslim, he was one of my people. His name wasn't Floyd, mm -hmm. but Fareed. I can assure you the media and Fox News will be talking about it nonstop. That's right. But when it's a white guy, it can't be a terrorist. CNN saying he has personal issues. I have personal issues, but right. I'm not going to yeah. drive a truck with bombs. And the guy did this to get there aren't enough out. trucks for the amount of personal issues I have, Dean. So listen, <laughs> I, need a, I would need a fleet myself of trucks, <laughs> rentals, buying. And the guy goes there and literally called for a revolution for patriots yeah. to join yeah. him to take yeah. Biden out. No one showed up. So he gave up. But Dean, you, here's where you morph into Eric Bollard and you're dead on. You said the media will now use every word but terrorist to describe That's the right. man with a bomb who wants to kill Democrats. Why? Simple, because he's white. Same reason the media oh. won't call Ashley Babbitt all the other January 6th Trump supporters terrorists you said we're seeing an insurgency of trump supporters just as malcolm nance warned as you said he has right. a bomb and will kill people to get rid of democrats in the live stream the man demanded joe biden and other prominent democratic politicians step down accusing them of killing americans um as long as you here's the key you said as long as trump walks free expect more of this that's where you put on your lawyer hat right i put on my lawyer hat and my patriotic american hat but look it's common sense if a leader of a violent movement can incite a terrorist attack on national TV on January 6th like Trump and radicalize people for two months before that, like an ISIS recruiter. And everyone who did the attack is charged or goes to jail. But the leader walks free and plays golf. What do you think is going to happen? His people go like, this guy's a genius. I'm going to follow him. And we're going to have more attacks and more terrorism. Donald Trump has to be charged. And this is not like lock yeah. him up. This is charge him. Let him go before a jury. If he's not convicted, I can live with it. But not charging him is going to embolden the MAGA terrorists, which yeah. I view MAGA now as yeah. more of a threat yeah. than Al Qaeda. Yes. Because they're, they're right on our soil and they're right here with us. And, you know, a recent CBS poll showed 55% of Trump supporters defended the January 6th terrorist attack as an act defending freedom. 55% mm -hmm. of MAGA yeah. is on board with January 6th. The signs are here. Yeah. They're right in front of us. It's like blinking red. Hey, well, we're going to do more of this. And 
Dean, in all your, you know, in your fantastic Dean Obadala show, we see that behind you on Sirius XM. Yes. I, Thank you. I mean, have you ever seen all the stories converge with this uh, Navy SEAL, Robert McNeil, who he, he's the one that says he killed bin Laden. He, he was a, a, a part of SEAL Team 6. But he said, he tweeted, did you see how the Taliban rolled through the streets and took back their country? I know a few dudes who would do the same with me right now. You just said military veteran calls to violently overthrow the Biden administration. Nothing to see here. I mean, <laughs> right? Full circle from getting bin Laden, Afghanistan. You just said, keep in mind this tweet by a former Navy SEAL seeking to recruit to overthrow our government was sent out while the media is covering a bomb plot in D.C. by a guy who wants to kill people if Joe Biden doesn't resign. The Trump insurgency is building. With Will the FBI act? Like, yes, thank you. We need the FBI to act. You know, I don't know if you saw, but I got a very graphic death threat yesterday in my yeah. YouTube page from a self-identified Trump supporter. So we'll see if he is, but it's at Trump 2024, threatening to kill me, my family, saying, get Kevlar, you're, and we're coming for you next, Dean, and hollow points, and somebody shut this guy up. Right. And I reported to the authorities. This is building. Yesterday was MAGA terrorist day. You had the guy with the truck. Mm -hmm. You had the veteran calling for his fellow veterans to join him yeah. to potentially yeah. overthrow the government. I got death threats. So many of us are getting threats like we've not seen before. It is building, and they might be building to a day or to a movement where someone says, guys, today is the day. And they're going to rise up. And it's not going to yeah. be a civil yeah. war, but it's going to be pockets of violence and innocent people are going to die. And you call it MAGA terrorism. And you're right. I mean, when I hear you get a death threat, because you're a comedian, you're a Muslim, and uh, you're what? And you're also a lawyer. So yes. I always wonder, well, I like, a lot of things. I don't know. Is it your, is it your, your complaint against Fox News? Is it being Muslim or is it just a bad joke? Do you know what I'm saying? Is it just someone didn't well, like your jokes? And well, I wrote the, the person put that clip, that comment to a clip. I had something I said on MSNBC about a week and a half ago where I said, Donald Trump is the Osama bin Laden of January 6th mm -hmm. yeah. and that he must be prosecuted yeah. the same way we prosecute any terrorist. And my point is Democrats, Please start calling for the investigation of Donald Trump. It is not partisan. It is patriotic to call for an investigation into a man who incited a terrorist attack. And that's what I said. This guy is a Trump supporter, very upset by those comments. So threatened to kill me. I also wrote an article for MS about the GOP. They're not as bad as the Taliban. I'm, you know, not right. yet at least. But pe pro-life people got really upset and wrote a lot of articles in Fox News. Lara Trump attacked me and stuff. You get these attack this it's not like a conversation right they want to silence us if they don't agree with our opinion that's where we are yeah well yeah um you said the u.s um you said the, this u.s military veterans views the va taliban success as an inspiration to talk openly about recruiting others to join in a violent rebellion to overthrow our government i can assure you he's not the only trumper thinking that um again hoping the fbi is watching and you said it's not if maga terrorists will attack again but when uh, time for the DOJ to act. They must infiltrate MAGA like they would any other domestic terrorist group. They must also neutralize all threats. Our na nation literally hangs in the balance. I mean, as the lawyer part of you, Dean, must say, okay, I know it takes time to build a case. And, you know, our friend Glenn Kirshner says, yes, mm -hmm. I do believe Trump is being criminally investigated. But you're right. This is right up through yesterday, a growing and boiling threat that feels like it's right here. Unless... Homeland Security, right. Yeah. Homeland Security two weeks ago, ABC reported it and put out statements to local offices saying they've seen an uptick of chatter online by Trump supporters talking about using violence to reinstall Trump because you're upset. So this was DHS a couple of weeks ago. This is this, none of this is yeah. coincidence. None of it's happenstance. It's building towards something. Yeah. And I'm channeling Malcolm Nance because. Mm -hmm. I talked to him, you talked to him, we learned from Malcolm, we learned from Navi Jamali and others. Yeah. This is, and you know what, on some level it's personal because after 9-11, these people on the right made my life and the life of the Muslim community so horrific right. by demonizing right. us and saying we don't stand up against the terrorists. Meanwhile, these same people are literally defending the terrorists who attacked our capital on January 6th, and I won't have it. And I'm going to call them out the same way they called us out. Either you're with the United States or you're with terrorist Trump. There's no moral ambiguity. We have the same yeah. clarity yeah. after 9-11. And by the I way, it. I think Frank Laguzzi and others, speaking of our friends, Dean, you know, have said there is more and more danger of these lone wolf attacks. January 6th was a specific day with a specific electoral process that was a target. But now you just have these ro roaming lunatics that, you know, are, are you know, thinking I got to take back my government somehow by myself or I got to get Biden to resign. I mean, it's just it's 
Okay. Oh, you have elected officials support. I mean, you have Marjorie Taylor Greene with the clip we saw yesterday. Mo Brooks, Bobby. yeah. He's a piece of S. And then you've got Mo Brooks. You have Paul Gozar, oh. the Republican from Arizona, is a white nationalist defending Ashley Babbitt um, and others. You know, these people, they are literally defending yeah. the terrorists who attacked our capital. Listen to this disgrace now that you brought it up, Marjorie Taylor Greene. This is on Getter. Mm-hmm. She, she posted this yeah. about the president of the United States. Joe Biden, you're not a president. You're a piece of yeah. Thousands of Americans are stuck over there in Afghanistan, and you're letting the Taliban kick your ass while you're lecturing governors about masks and vaccines. Do your job. Bring these Americans home. Wow. Let's first of all talk about how entirely responsible Trump is for all of what she's talking about, but it's just... This has become okay. This lunatic in Congress calling the president of the United States a piece of b- right? She's the f- and she's the future of the GOP. She raised $3 million yeah. in contribution the first quarter They're of this year. They're talking about her going I'll to think- Iowa. It's like she's right. yes. president. I'm like- she, no, ma- there's no joke for people who are listening. Marjorie Taylor Greene more represents the true base of the MAGA movement than any normal, not Kevin McCarthy, not even Steve Scalise. Marjorie Taylor Greene is the future of that party. The GOP never corrects for the better. It keeps going more extreme. The G- that's why I say the GOP is not a political party. It's a white nationalist fascist movement. And I'll defend that academically any day. That's what we're dealing with. And meanwhile, Marjorie Taylor Greene says, bring the Americans back. They are coming back. At the same time, she was on Steve Bannon's podcast this week and said, don't bring the brown people. She called them yeah. Afghan re- refugees. Don't bring them here, even though they yeah. risk their lives well, to help our troops. Thanks. And you, we tweeted about a Tucker Klansman uses Representative Ilan Omar as a reason to oppose refugees. Omar came to the U.S. at 12, later became a community activist helping people in need, then a state rep, now a member of Congress. I'd say we need more Omars and less Tuckers. Yeah. Thank you. And you said, you know, of Tucker's funny how the so-called master race is afraid of competition. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Right? That's right. The refugees, I kid, they'll take my job. Well, maybe you should work harder. Maybe yeah. you're not yeah. working. Yeah, and you, you know, said me? you said I have a proposal. Let's accept the refugees from Afghanistan, deport the white supremacists. <laughs> I'm with you mm-hmm. on that. Tucker gone. Let's take the rep. My dad was a Palestinian Muslim refugee. He came here. I saw how hard he worked and how much he loved this country for the opportunity he gave him. And I, I made me grateful for this for this country accepting him. And these people on the right don't represent the ideals of this nation or why my father and millions of immigrants came to this country. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, you know, you also wrote a couple great pieces. One concern for this whole... Wheel thank you. Um, right-wing hypocrites! You said the last few days airwaves have been filled with Republicans voicing their deep concern over the rights of women in Afghanistan. You have to wonder where these voices were when extremists, based on a narrow reading of their religious belief, enacted a law that forces a woman who was raped to carry the fetus of a rapist to term. Yep. The same law that makes it a crime for anyone to assist that woman in trying to abort the rapist uh, fetus. You were just talking about this is just Arizona, right? Mm-hmm. Well, Arkansas. This this was passed in Arkansas in March. It's held up by the courts. Yeah. But this is when Roe versus Wade gets overturned by this Supreme Court. That will be the law of the land. They're not hiding it. Asa Hutchinson, the governor, and the Republicans there have said point blank, their goal is to abolish abortion in America, meaning like the Arkansas law, there is no exception for rape. So yeah. you, literally, I'm not exaggerating. If you're raped, you are forced to carry the fetus of the rapist a term. And under the law, anyone tries to help you get an abortion, it's a felony. Yeah. That's yeah. where they're heading. That is based on religion. As, they are not as bad as the Taliban. But 2022 slogan for GOP is, hey, we're not as bad as the Taliban. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> but you've been pointing this out, Dean. Slightly better. Ever since we've been talking since 9-11, you've been pointing this out, that these grotesque rules are based on the Taliban's perversion of Islam, what the Taliban and it's this is the same thing. It's they're using their religion, as you say. Republicans champion measures to deprive women of freedom of their own uh, over their own bodies, as well as protecting them from violence, ensuring they're paid the same wage as men. Um, and you say they've done so at least in part to impose their religious beliefs on others. So you know, tomato, it, tomato. <laughs> it, it's absolutely true. And there's these right wing publications saying Dean has equated the Taliban with pro-lifers. No, no, I'm talking about very specific Republicans who are turning their religious beliefs into the law of the land. That's what the Taliban does. That's the same. It's not as egregious. I'm not kidding around here. It's horrific what the Taliban does. It's barbaric and it's un-Islamic as well, because look at Afghanistan neighbors, Pakistan. Pakistan is a Muslim country. They've had a female Muslim prime minister elected twice in Benazir Bhutto. 60% of their doctors are women. They have female CEOs. 
Afghanistan's over the border. It's barbaric and primitive, which is really Islam. And much more countries in the Muslim world represent Pakistan. There's none, not even Saudi, which is ridiculous to say, not even Saudi is as bad as the Taliban. Saudi's still horrible, but women go to school, they drive, they can run for office now for local office. The Taliban is an outlier. It's not Islam. Yeah. Yeah. And I would submit that these guys on the right are not mainstream Christianity. I'm not going to speak to Christianity, but yeah. it's not the Christianity I know. It's extremely. Exactly. Right.